blessed to have this great families and families here ministering. Wow. Okay, that's great. I'm already here and I already want to come back. That's that's great. Uh, okay, so here we go. The universal and eternal Jesus. That's who I want to be ten minutes. Okay. For instance, Jesus could have loved us from heaven, but he, but he could only redeem us by coming to, coming to earth. Jesus could love us as the Son of God, but he could only rescue us and redeem us as the Son of Man. Jesus stood before Pilate. Pilate pointed his finger and said, Behold the man. I believe it was the completeness of Jesus that struck Pilate. Oh, he had seen bits and pieces of him before. But for the first time in Pilate's life, he had the pleasure and the honor of seeing a full and complete man. It's complete in character. In Jesus, all virtues combine and blend. Jesus is a is a character of perfect symmetry. And, and character, when complete, it's like the city of New, New Jerusalem John saw coming down. Scripture said the height, the width, the breadth, and the length were all equal. That's what character is when it's perfect. But most humans have one feature without the other. They have height without width. Width without breadth. Breadth without length. But in the perfect character is not made by the possession of one set of qualities. A perfect character is made by the possession of contrasted sets of qualities maintained in perfect balance and poise. People lack balance. People lack perfect character. Because they're strong, but they're not gentle. Gentle, but they're not strong. They're pious, but they're not practical. They're practical, but they're not pious. And if they sit in heavenly places, they usually forget about the sorrow miseries of the earth. And if they're focused on the sorrows and miseries of the earth, they forget that they're sitting in heavenly places. Why are we like that? Because people are partial. We're broken. And we're imperfect. But not... Because Jesus combined all of these contrasted qualities in Himself. He was strong and He was gentle. He was partial, He was practical, and He was pious. Uh, he was uh, uh, pure and He was gentle. He's a man of prayer. He's a man of action. He's lion. He's lamb. He's the comforter and He's the captain. Uh, he has the fiery uh, energy of an Elijah, but he has the tenderness of a Jeremiah. He has the meekness of the Moses, but he has the redeeming compassion of Isaiah. All these characteristics and attributes meet and blend in Jesus. He is a man rounded, complete, and perfect. Behold the man. Jesus belongs to all the ages. This is, this is, I believe, this is what the Lord gave me for Pam and I in 2019. He began to talk to me in the last month. I shared with Pam. He said, you know about me being eternal, but you don't understand how universal I am. So, I believe that before God will open up international door, have to understand that Jesus is everybody's national.
Jesus belongs to all the ages. He transcends all the limitations of time. He's not temporary. He is eternal. He is a man of his own time. Everybody else is a man of their own time. Everybody else is a man of his own age. He thinks the thoughts of his age. He, he, uh, uh, his outlook is limited through the thoughts of his age. You can date most people by examining their works. You can say of oh, that book, that's a 19th century book. That book's a 17th century book. Why? Because every man mirrors his time and is largely made by it. But you can't date the mind of Jesus. You can't date the mind of Jesus. He is of all the ancients, the only modern. He's not simply the man of the first century. He's the man still of the 21st century. His teaching's not obsolete. It's not superseded. It's not outdated. Other teachers have come and had their day. But Jesus is still the unchallenged Lord of wisdom. And the reason for this is because of His words. His words correspond with what must be everywhere and at all times and in all worlds true. The world has suffered a sea of change since Jesus walked on the earth. Institutions have disappeared. Systems of thoughts have disappeared. Teachers who were influential in their day have passed on into forgetfulness. But Jesus, He abides. He still abides. His words are still the fountain of wisdom. We still look to Jesus for guidance and inspiration. He is the guide for this generation. And He'll be the guide for the generation that's not even born yet. Why? Because He is not a man of a certain age. But He is a man that has been freed from all the limitations of time and age and His thoughts and words are eternal. Jesus is complete in His belonging. Listen to what I'm saying now. Jesus is complete in His belonging in that He doesn't belong to one tribe. He doesn't belong to one nation. He doesn't belong to one nationality. Jesus, just like He transcends the limits of time, He has transcended all the limits of nationality. He is not just eternal. He is universal. He's everybody's national. Race puts its stamp on everybody. Shakespeare and Milton are English. Gulf is German. Uh, uh, Racine and Molière are French. Dante is Italian. And these men look through everything, through English, through French, through German, and through Italian eyes, respectively. They may be read, they may be studied, and they may be admired in other countries, but they don't have the appeal to other nationals as they do their own. But not so with Jesus. He's cosmopolitan. He's universal. His words never, ever pass away. He speaks to every man in the language in which that man was born. Oh, did you hear that? And Jesus is just at home in the East as He is at home in the West. He is at home in every land. We don't have a monopoly on Jesus in the good old USA. Jesus is just as home in China and India and the islands of the sea. That's why I said He is everybody's national. And to think the simple scripture, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men <laughs> unto myself. He's equally loved, he's equally admired, he's equally respected, and he is equally beloved wherever he is known. He's a man of 
amongst men. His humanity exalts him. Mount Everest is the highest mountain. Jesus is the Mount Everest of the human race. In him, we find our, we reach our pinnacle and we reach our crown. Men and women, people, were and still are Jesus' supreme interest. Some people have their interest, their greatest interest is in art, politics, or literature. Not Jesus. It's all about people. That's why he said, I come to seek and to save that which was lost. And the great plan of the Great Commission is waiting on the brotherly compassion of true believers. And if this spirit is ever quenched by racial antipathies, by narrow nationalisms, by smug cultures, then there will be no chance of the world being saved through Jesus Christ. If we ask that contemptuous question, am I my brother's keeper? depths of God's purpose and the depths of his plan is unsearchable. This is what I'm saying now. I'm winding this down. If your faith cannot be bewildered and perplexed, then you have domesticated God. Your faith is in a religious system, not a limitless God. That's why Andrew Murray said, be wearing your prayer above every of limiting God, not just in your unbelief, but by fancying that you know what He can do. Just when you think you've seen it all, He's going to show you something else. Just when you think you know it all, He's going to teach you something else. Just when you think I've heard it all, no, no, He's going to tell you something new. Because David said His ways are immeasurable, they're fathomless. You will never discover the depth of height and you will never reach the limit of his grace and his love and you've got to understand the gospel is more than what we thought the gospel is not just some private religious preference the gospel is nothing less than the de declaration of God that there will be a new universe ruled by a new human race so the question is not question is not, does the gospel promise enough to thrill my heart? That's not the question. The question is, does my faith have enough elasticity in it to stretch out and lay hold on the grandeur of the promises of God? Because I believe God wants to do exceeding abundantly above all. I can ask or think according to the power of the kingdom, Holy Spirit, living, moving in my life. This year, God is going to God is going to raise heroes up, and it's going to be heroes through through <laughs> through the worst kind of mess you ever could go through. This because this is how God God uh, uh, takes ordinary people and makes heroes out of them. Because He's going to take all the tr tri tragedy, all the trials of your life, and work out for His good. The other thing about God is this: God has the nerve and the back to look at you and say let me tell you brother let me tell you sister your suffering is not worthy to be compared with the glory that's going to be revealed in you that's the difference between man's gospel and the gospel of Jesus Christ man's gospel is trivial and is trivializing but the bold magnitude of the promises of God makes fun And I'll tell you something, all these promises of God, it makes my small thinking inexcusable. Because when I view the magnitude, the massive goodness of God, then I realize that small-minded Christian is a living contradiction. Narrow-mindedness is a non-Christian mentality. 
Largeness of mind, largeness of scope, largeness of vision, largeness of worship, largeness of giving, largeness of prayer. That's the Christian outlook. Augustine says it's the yearning that makes the heart deep. The promises of God are calculated to deepen the hunger and thirst in your heart. You've got to remember, God is a big spender. God is rich in love and grace and mercy. He sent His Son for us. His love has no outer limit. We are the one that measures our love in calculating ways, pennies at a time. Careful not to love too much. Careful not to give too much. Careful not to trust too much. Careful not to forgive too much. Careful, careful. We're careful not to But God is glorified in lavishing His gifts on us and His mercy on us, His blessings on us, without regard to any cost to Himself. So if the Father has chosen us and justified us, and if the Son is interceding for us, then tell me who's going to win again a case against us. God sticks up for us. God provides for us. God God's love is royal, it's precious, it's just, and it's eternal. God, God defends us. God cares for us. God is with us in friendship. God is over us in provision. God is around us in protection. God is, is with us in perseverance. Therefore, you should never feel abandoned by God. You should never feel condemned by God. You should never feel unloved by God. You should never feel deprived by God. You should never feel condemned or abandoned because God is with you, not against you. So this is the year. Turn your groaning and complaining into glorious worship and praise. This is the year to, to go beyond the small thinking and stretch your faith. This is the year to go from giving pennies to giving dollars, to giving, from giving dollars to giving hundreds, from giving hundreds to giving thousands, giving thousands to giving millions. Oh, God does everything according to your faith. saved but still in the prison of human beings. Pamela has been on this journey for a long time. We've been there and got the hats and the shirts. We don't care if we're impressing anybody or <laughs> I don't care if my song is ever recorded by anybody. I, I just write and sing because I love Jesus. That's it. And I love people. Oh, I love people. I love people. I love gospel. Now, God's going to move you <clears throat> in the next few moments. So please stay with me. I will wake up this one service with you. And one moment in God's presence can change your life forever. One word from God can change your life. So what are you doing, Lloyd? I'm, I'm just waiting on God. And God may give me something. Folks, I have seen God do the most amazing things. I mean, it just blows my mind. We've had prophecies before there was internet. We've had prophecies on Dateline NBC. Uh, I just wish I could remember. We gotta, we, gotta, we gotta remember somehow. Just some of the things we've seen, just some, just like, God blows my mind. Yeah, I was on a plane almost about eight months ago, flying from Dallas to Sacramento. 
300 passengers on board. And they put me up to first class. So I went up and sat down. Two hours into that long flight, it was like four hour flight, I had to go to the bathroom. So I'm thinking in my mind, oh, I'm in first class. I get to use the first class bathroom. Take four steps and you're there. When I stood to my feet and the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, go to the bathroom in the back of the airplane. Now folks, I don't, I don't put handles on stories. I tell the truth. This, this is what happened. I don't make up stuff and exaggerate. I went to the back of the plane and stood there. And there was two people ahead of me, and 300 passengers on that. There was a big black man standing up ahead of me. Big broad guy, he was probably 63 years old, never seen him before. Just a plain guy standing there, had his head down. Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, tap him on the shoulder and tell him he's highly favored of God. God's going to use him to change nations. Now, folks, this wasn't Fred Price. It wasn't T.D. Jake. This was just a man that you never pick out of the crowd. He's just an ordinary man. Tapped him on the shoulder. I said, you're, you're highly favored of God. God's going to use you to change nations. Stand up. i got to prophesy to you. Yes. Come down here. Uh, Listen, by the way, if I call you out, don't be afraid. I ain't going to embarrass you. You know, if you're committing adultery, I ain't going to tell everybody. I'll whisper. I'll look nothing on you. But don't be afraid. You know, you shouldn't be afraid of prophets. When I, when I first started the ministry, I, I, would, I, would, I was so insecure, I tried to make feel, people feel insecure. I was raised in Pentecost. Where everything. You meet everybody and they look up. Oh, are you? So I'd go on the platform and I'd sit there and try to intimidate the whole audience. And I'm 115 pounds soaking wet, you know. Look like a little Bernie up there. <laughs> it didn't work. I tapped that man on the shoulder. I said, you're highly favored of God. God's going to use you to change nations. He put his head down and he stood there. He never looked at me, never said anything. And I thought he was going to crack me or something. And then he just whispered to my ear and he said, you're the fifth person who has told me that in the last three days. He's one of my best friends today. His brother is a four-star general in the U.S. Army. General Lloyd Austin, Grand Saint Command for Obama. See, if you'll just get delivered from yourself, shoot. And the Lord's saying, be bold, be bold. Lift your hands. See, this woman, I don't know her, but she's a handmaiden of God. Handmaiden of God. Now, let me just explain something too. Not everybody who prophesies are prophets. Okay? He said everybody should prophesy, but it's like you have doctors and then you have specialists. I can take you to the place where God manifested me as a prophet. It was Granite City, Illinois. United Pentecostal Church. New Peace of Church. I always operated the gifts of the Spirit. You know, called up people, told them what was wrong with their body and all that. But I never operated prophetic. This night in Granite City, Illinois, probably in 1988, 85, somewhere around there, a lady walked down. I told her what was wrong through the gift of the word of knowledge and healing. She got healed. But then she was walking back to her seat. All of a sudden, a man came to my mind and said, Susie. And I said, lady, turn around. She turned around and said, this has never happened. You can hold your hand down. Uh, uh, she said, turned around and I said, this has never happened to me before. But there's, there's a name in my mind. And I said, do you know who Susan is? She said, she's my daughter. And that 
loosen the faith for the prophetic in me because I was scared to death. But when she said that, I said, oh, wow, something happened. And when she said that, all of a sudden, before I even hold it in, I prophesied. I said, Susie will never try to commit suicide again, and she will never be bound by depression again. That lady literally fainted in the aisle. She stayed down there for at least five minutes. Pulled her back up. She woke up. I said, who is Susie? She said, she's my daughter. What happened to her? She said she tried to commit suicide four times. Why? Because she's been bound by depression. That was when God gave me the prophetic anointing. So I know I had my battles. Are you right-handed? is where you suffer, you will get healing unto others. What the devil meant for evil, God meant for good. Physically, you were the Lord saying, it's physical. And the Lord spared your life physically. And the Spirit of the Lord tells me that even this year, you will see more of a purpose in that because there's some things that God's going to restore back financially to me. Okay? And are you married? Is your husband here? Does he come here? Well, would you like him to? Okay. God's going to visit Thin or real thin? Real thin, that's what I'm seeing. But he's a wise man. God's touching his blood pressure right now. And even in his heart, God's uh, adding years to his heart. Don't know, there will be no heart trouble. Okay? Thank you, Father. Isn't this beautiful? Hot on motion of us now, there's some tightness across your chest also. God's revealing it. Ah, uh, thank you, Lord. The Lord has given you a new organ. There's a new organ. There's a new organ being put in your body right now. Don't wonder, but don't doubt this, because this is real. This is really happening. Thank you, Lord. There's a new organ. Thank you, Lord, for healing this lady. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. You know anybody named David? You'll meet him very, very soon. You'll prophesy him. Because you prophesy too. Does she prophesy? You'll prophesy to him. Lord will stir up the call of God in his life. He's running from God. He's just running from God. So, Lord, I thank you. Yes, you work with your hands, but you've got some problems in those arms. God's healing you right now. You work with your hands. You've got, yes, Lord. God's anointing your eyes to see, to put things together. Do you know, as God is my witness, when, when these guys were up here worshiping, and the Holy Spirit came upon me real strong. I gotta watch my time. But the Holy Spirit came on me really strong and said, There will this will be this church is going to um, receive great financial provision. Because here's why. I'm not making this stuff up. I take the presence of God very sacredly.
word of the Lord very simply. I heard in the spirit, lights, camera, action. You will make movies here. You will make movies here. Don't you ever doubt this. This is not just a singing place. This is an acting place. This is a God's raising up actors because I saw, saw her in the spirit sitting and making things, designing and making things. She's been, and the Lord just showed me. said, I just, I'm raising up the crew, the costume crew, the designing crew. And, and the lights and the camera and the action. So, so I'm going to release a gifted anointing to write movies here today because this church has been charged to reach this generation, not just in Baytown, not just in Baytown, but the Lord says you will, in Mexico, you will minister and reach people in Mexico. You will reach people across just close to San Diego, the Spirit of the Lord said, you will reach people there. So don't you doubt what God is doing in this church. And don't you doubt how God is leading. First thing I did when I came here is, don't tell me anything about your church. I just wait on God. I just wait on God. Oh, you ought to lift your hands. And worship. You need to lift your hands and just worship here right now. none like you no one else can touch my heart like you do and I could search for all eternity long there is none like you Let it breathe on you. Let it breathe on you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I could search for all eternity long and find there is no is going to liberate you financially this year. But the power. Don't you ever doubt your gifting. Don't you ever doubt your skill. Don't you ever doubt your talent. God is liberating you in 2019. Take the glory of God. Sweet anointing. Uh, yeah, both of you come down here. Fall on me. Sweet anointing. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. everybody to get a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit today. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say. Oh, the, the Lord just said, don't ever worry about a surgery. You'll never have another surgery. Let me explain to you about the prophetic. 
prophets confirm, they don't confuse. This isn't a show, this isn't a circus, this is the entertainment. And listen, I'm going to teach you something here also. This is so important because so many people are going to leave that I wish you had to call me out. I wish you had to call. I don't have time to do that. Plus, I'm not that, I'm not God. I can't. But here's what you've got to understand. This is what the Holy Spirit taught me. I can stand here and prophesy to this couple. I could say about their business or their finances. And it could be right for them. But you could be sitting there saying, man, that's, I need that too. Well, that word is not just limited to them. You can take, without me prophesying, you could say, I'm receiving that too right now. You see, that's how we need to interact in the heavenly presence of God here today. I could be prophesying about their children. You could say, that's my word too. So this is what I'm, uh, this is what I'm telling you. Thank you, Jesus. Just let me flow in the Holy Spirit. Well, God's kind of overhauling your body right now. You need that, okay? God's overhauling your body because you've been alone 2018. Oh, but you still smile. You still smile. And yes, that's your brand. See, that's your brand. You're wearing your brand, the Lord says, because you you you, you, you love nice things. You love nice things. You like to decorate the spirit, the Lord says. And that's that's your brand. That's your brand. That's who you are. I'm going to increase. I'm going to increase you in 2019. I'm going to bring great increase to you. It's going to come upon your family. Thank you, Lord. So you'll sleep good tonight as your sign of your miracle. The new, great, beautiful thing that God is doing. This will be glorious for you this year. And I just, yes, Lord, yes, you like flowers. I know that. You see that Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And uh, I'm gonna, there's a fresh anointing coming upon you. Coming upon you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands. Stand up. Your back is healed in Jesus' name. Your legs are healed. And the Spirit of the Lord says, this will be the greatest year of your life. This will be the greatest year of your life. Expect the unexpected. Expect it. And the Lord says, be bold now. Be bold. Be bold. Because this will be the greatest year of your life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. It's out into darkness. Open my eyes. Okay, here it comes. You can see it in the spirit. You can see it. I see it right up above your head. And it says D. Prophets, we know in part and we prophesy in part. We get bits and pieces out of the heavenlies, we bring it down to work, and you in the natural, you put it together. A double portion upon D E B who will pursue Jesus. Light of the world. You stepped out in the darkness. You're gonna swallow now. something in your throat. It's healed right now. Hold on. Beauty that may uh, These are great people. Okay? Because he can save them mummy. Must be great. Uh, you're a team, the Lord says. You're a team. Yes. And you 
will spear the Lord says 2019. You will lead many. You will raise up many workers in this church. Many workers. And you will lead them. You will lead them. And they will serve the youth. They will serve the seniors. They will serve. They will serve. Because God has entrusted you with a heart to serve. Is that right? With a heart to serve. And the anointing's not taught, it's caught. If you want humility, rub your shoulders on this couple. If you want character, rub your shoulders on them. It will rub off on you. It will rub off on you. Father, a double portion. Let it come on them. I lay hands on them. Let it come upon them. And let them teach. Oh yes, teach. Teach, fear the Lord. They will teach. They will teach followers. They will teach the ministry of helps. The ministry, that ministry. Thank you, Father, for it. Thank you, Father, for it. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. All right. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Oh, yes. You're going to receive your Bible, and unsaved loved ones are coming to Jesus. Unsaved loved ones. Unsaved loved ones by the... Everybody in this place in 2019, you're going... If you will start writing down tonight, if you will start writing down the names of unsaved loved ones, 2019, God is bringing them in. God is bringing them in. What does Bailey mean to you? Are you serious? That is unbelievable. What's your married? Bailey. What did I just say to you? The Lord was going to move in your family. Yeah. God knows everything. Bailey. That's her maiden name. Did you know that? That is unbelievable. Father, thank you for revival for every family. Every family. Every family in the name of Jesus Christ. Every family, God. Poor out of cousins or sons and daughters or grandchildren. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. All right, who's in the painting business? I got to prophesy to somebody who's in the painting business. Who's in the painting? Wave to me. You in the painting business? Painting. Painting. What what do you paint? You do have an end? Lift your hands. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. See, this is what the work of a prophet. He zeroes in, specialist very strategic, special way to raise a church into a level of faith where their faith is stretched. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Wow, you're going to make some new discoveries this year, the Lord says. Yes, and there's three contracts that are going to be designated to you also because you've got some other skills that you haven't even went at good enough yet. So, Father, pour out your blessings. Thank you, Jesus. When I was driving in here, I drove by and I saw all these cranes out there. I saw, like, these big old cranes. And the Lord says, tell somebody that to prophesy over it's just it's crazy over a crane company over a crane who knows a crane company come on down No. 
know this? Did you know that? You need to lift your hands. You need to thank God because God is in this place and He's speaking in a very special way. Very special way. This is very humbling. Light of the world. He stepped up. He's universal. He's not in just in this building. He's all over the world right now. He's universal. He's everybody's national. Beauty that made. I want you to look at Ricky. And you tell him there was a prophet who heard from God for him this morning. Does he live here? Bring him to church. Okay, bring him again because there's a strategic reason. And let these pastors lay hands on him. Because God is going to raise him up to be a multimillionaire for his kingdom. He's a good man. Tell him don't doubt it, but he's got to put God first in everything. You prophesy to him. If you will open up your mouth and just begin to pray, God says, I will put the prophetic words in your mouth. Release the glory on her, God, in the name of Jesus. You're my call. You're all together, love. All together, word. pray for you one more time. Amen. The mighty little woman of God. You will prophesy many people will be baptized in the Holy Spirit this year too. And the Spirit of the Lord says of the Holy Spirit. Church, you're going to have to build bigger pretty soon. You're going to have to build bigger pretty soon. Here's what the Lord spoke to me. The Lord, when we were at the table, and these folks will, will, will verify this, confirm it. The Spirit of the Lord says, you'll go from $500,000 miracle, right, to a million dollars, to a million and a half, triple. There's, there's going to be incredible wealth come through this church because your heart is right and your motive is right. Can I hear an amen? Can I hear an amen? Who is Alex? Who is Alex? I just heard Alex and the Holy Ghost. Come down here. Come down here. Okay. Religious people will be filled. Especially the Catholics. Where do you live? Baytown? Yeah. What's your... Pam. Pam, me? Pope. Pam what? Pope. <laughs> wow. Religious people, especially Catholics. <laughs> Take it, Pam. Church here? How long have you been coming? Seven or eight years. Married, sir. Good young man. Good young man. Got a good heart. Got a good heart. You like to hike? Huh? Absolutely. You like the outdoors? Like the outdoors? 
God's going to show you a lot of vision. So take take the notepad with you in your backpack, okay? Take it with you. Take it with you. You're going to write a book. You're going to write a book. You're going to write a book on fitness. You're going to write a book on fitness. That's right. Help. Good man. Don't you doubt what I'm saying. But you're going to write. You're going to write. That the glory of God is upon you. And, and don't you. Oh, that's right. That's right. Oh, you're going to get other offers to leave here. But God planted you here. Planet here. You're gonna write. 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 You're gonna write, you're gonna write scripts too. Don't you doubt it? Because I, you like, you like the visual. You like the visual. The Spirit of the Lord says, when I visited you in that college that you attended, I visited you in a very special way. I placed my hand upon you. It was sand something. I don't know what it is, but it, there's a sand something. I visited you in a very special way and I put my hand on you. Oh, I brought your... Creative anointed in this place. And this, this year I take off more bands off your mind and I illuminate your thinking even in a greater way. Come on, young people, you got to get this right now. A mighty Russian river right now in the name of Jesus. Glory to God! Glory to God! Rabba Shanda! Spear the Lord says, Don't you look back. Your labor was not in vain. You brought the Holy Spirit out pouring. You brought the Holy Spirit out pouring. You were bold. You stood strong. You come against religious spirits. And Spirit of the Lord says, I'm going to visit that geographical area again. <laughs> oh, the boldness of God is on you. The boldness of God is on you speak the word and God says just like Moses I will confirm my word with signs following Lord I pray for this entire audience right now pour out a, pour out your glory your glory your glory pour out your glory Pour out your glory. I'm about to quit. Pastor Cal is going to come and receive our offering in just a moment. But listen, I just feel there's some things that I'm saying here in the Holy Spirit. Pour out your glory. March is going to be a very special month here. March, the glory of God, breakthroughs, financial miracles are going to take place in the month of March. And, and just like, oh, wow, get ready. Because just like the Lord did for Pam and I, do you know that a year and a half ago, and I'm going to be talking about this supernatural miracle on Daystar with Joni and Mark Marcus, because a year ago, Pam and I flew, was invited to Yale University University 